Oh, hi. We're going to talk about the post-process in Replicant, a tool that allows you to control the exposure, lens effect, color grading. So let's start. To find it, uh, go to the scene list and you can filter by the post-process directly and you will find here the entry. If you don't have this in your environment, you can always go to the special tab, lights, and drag and drop the post-process from here. But in theory, all environments will come with the post-process. The first thing we're going to take a look in the post-process, it's going to be the exposure compensation. This will uh, shift the exposure values of the scene. Uh, so for example, right now we have a properly exposed interior, but uh, overexposed exterior. So if you want to see more details of the exterior, you can use the exposure compensation. This will keep the relationship between the sunlight and the lights inside the house the same, but you can choose what areas you want to expose, similar to as, uh, uh, any camera. If you have a bright area and a darker area, sometimes you cannot expose for both, so you have to choose what you want to expose properly. With that, you can use the exposure compensation. If you want more granular control of the brighter or darker areas, you have the highlight contrast and the shadow contrast. With the highlight, you can limit how bright uh, things can go in the scene. So if I lower this, you see everything that is uh, very bright in the environment will go a bit darker. And the similar with the shadow contrast, you can limit how black uh, dark areas will go. So if I lower this, everything will be a bit brighter and very dark areas like this corner are visible. If I come back to the original, you can see that some areas are going full black. The detail strength will increase a little bit the contrast as well as the sharpness and accentuate some effects like the blue that we will talk in a moment. And the middle gray, uh, middle gray will, if you have some changes here, it will shift a little bit where the, the middle gray point is. So some, uh, it will shift the uh, exposure to the dark areas or the bright areas. Okay, now let's talk about the lens effect and we are gonna use this environment to showcase that. The first thing we have here is the bloom. Bloom basically it's a light artifact that happened in real world cameras, uh, and it's um, basically a glow around lights and bright objects. Uh, so if we reduce the glow to zero, you will see our lights and bright objects are perfectly sharp as we increase the glow the light will bleed a little bit. And we have two different systems, a standard, which is more evenly, uh, a more evenly glow. And then we have the convoluted that for very bright points, um, the glow will have a star shape. So that's up to you, depending what you want. And the other thing that we have is the lens flare. This is how the light interact with the uh, glass of the lens of your camera. As you can see, uh, you can see the effect of our, your lights interacting with, uh, with your camera and you can reduce this or remove it completely, up to you. And the vignette intensity will darker the corners of your image. or uh, leave a clean image. For the next setting, we have moved to a more simpler scene to show the effect. And that's, uh, let's go to the post process again, the shadow settings. Here you can enable or disable ray trace shadows in the entire project. And to see what ray trace shadows does, for the most part, it's render a higher quality shadows and allow for soft uh, shadows. So if I increase the line size, you can see how soft these shadows will become. 
if I reduce the value, it will become sharper. So what happened if we disable ray trace? As you can see, a bunch of uh, artifacts will appear. First of all, we cannot longer achieve soft shadows. We'll have lower uh, quality shadows in some surfaces and the quality of the shadows will degrade the longer, uh, the far away you are from the light source. If you disable ray trace, you have two shadow methods. You have shadow maps and virtual shadow maps. This is a more advanced system than shadow maps. Uh, it allows for uh, some soft shadows. As you can see, the quality is not as good as for ray tracing. And sometimes the performance can be a bit worse. So in general, if you can and your hardware supported, uh, leave ray trace shadows enabled as well as lumen hardware ray trace shadows uh, ray trace sorry uh, this will uh, improve the quality of the global illumination next we have the color grading this will allow to change the look of our scene the first setting is temperature this will uh, cool or warm the entire uh, scene then you have the tint. With the small increments, you can change uh, the look of the of the image. A lower values will go for a more greenish greenish look, more like a matrix sort of thing, or higher values will go towards the magenta. And then you can choose a specific color to tint your image. Next, you have uh, LUTs. Basically, if you're familiar with uh, video or photo editing softwares, these are presets. You can click on the folder, go to LUTs, and here you will see these weird icons. But what they do is apply a color preset to your scene. So you can quickly go through them and check them, see if someone, some of this uh, fits what you're looking. For example, this one. And you can tweak the intensity so zero is disabled one is all the way and you can always put a value in the middle um, next you have a bit more granular control over the color of your scene uh, you have the saturation if you enable the lock icon you will increase or decrease the saturation of your whole environment if not, you can do only for red, green, or blue channels. So increasing the saturation of the reds or the greens uh, or the blues. The blues. Uh, then you have the contrast. You can do the same. Uh, affect the entire contrast of your image or just affect one of the channels. And you have the gamma and the gain that will affect the lighting and the brightness of your scene in two different ways uh, and again you can control the three channels at one or just one of them for the lumen settings these are more advanced and in general you would want to take a look at the unreal documentation about lumen which is his uh, global illumination technology in general if you have a small emissive surface as the only source of light it will create some noise in your scene. Uh, you can improve the quality, uh, increasing the value of the final gather quality. And for the rest of the settings, in general, leave it as they are. For the last settings, we have path tracing. This is yet in a very early implementation, so we're not going to go over it, as it will require an entire video. Then tone mapping is an uh, advanced setting for how color is managed in the in replicant so again i would say leave it as default and then you have some other settings here you can change the global illumination system uh, the reflection again uh, reflection technology and then you have screen space ambient occlusion this will in this environment is not very noticeable in some of them will darker a little bit areas that are uh, like crevices corners things like that 
Uh, you can leave it disabled uh, by default. It's more of an uh, artistic uh, choice if you want. And for the rest, I would leave it as default as it will provide the best quality. And with that, we have finished with the post process. We have left some parameters without explaining as the effects. Uh, we will create a specific video for those once we have uh, effects uh, available 